Thank you so much for all of your support and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hi guys, welcome back. I just want to show you like my most thriving garden plant <laughs> out of everything I planted. And it's so funny because there's nothing I even planted. This is a random cherry tomato. <laughs> Here are a pile of things that we still need to organize and put away. Um, that just randomly grew and I don't even know how it got here. But, yay! <laughs> so I am going to take a little credit for this. Look at these little cherry, tiny cherry tomatoes growing. And um, yeah, that means I have some type of energy to grow something, even if it's by accident and it wasn't me at all. It could have possibly been a bird. But I'm going to show you Luna here because it is the size. <laughs> it's bigger than our dog. Luna is bigger than Luna. So I was really excited about that. Luna is really excited about that too. Hi, baby girl. Hi, Luna. It's my baby. Hi, Luna, my baby. Say hi. <laughs> Lola's a little shy. All right, so we are, uh, Dennis finished this cage. We are going to take it right now because it is going to be Murph's new cage. He's going to join um, the barn area. Again, I always make the same joke. I know it's not a barn, but we call it a barn. He's going to join our barn of friends because we have a very special friend for him and we want to introduce him to her. So. Let's take this uh, cage, babe. I just got my nails done. I'm trying not to ruin them. Hold on, babe. I'm holding this with one hand. Is there another way to grab it? Uh, all right, let me put the phone down for a sec. Okay. Wow, look at that sun. I just love coming out here when it's evening time. Well, morning time and evening time and afternoon, but I love the way the sun hits the barn. Alright, cage is up. Next, we have to put in uh, the tacks, the nail tacks here, so it can hold the cage from. Alright, these are, I just called them nail tacks, but they're clips. Uh, they're nail clips, and I might have said this a million times, but I know the viewers like it. Sometimes when we repeat so that they don't have to go back to other videos, but these are the nail clips. We're going to put them right here. There are some nail clips that are already on the barn and they hold the cage in place really well.
guys joined um, the barn actually since we've been here. And I'm super excited because not only is he getting a bigger and better cage, he is going to join a new friend that joined our flock. And I'm really, really excited. I'll uh, show you Murph coming into his new home and um, his, their, his new friend, our new friend, that joined us. Alright, so we got the... Uh, Food and water waiting for him. His perch is all set up. And here he comes. Hi, Ma. Hi. 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 Woo. are excited. Hi. Welcome to your new home. This is how Murph shows he's excited. And say hello to Stella. He's saying hello to Stella. Do you like Stella? You think? Look, he actually has friends over here on the side, but he's completely ignoring them. <laughs> Unfortunately, they divorced, but it was a really nasty breakup. It was a really nasty divorce. And even though he was attached to the man, um, I was told that the woman ended up uh, keeping him due to the settlement or whatever. And because she held on so much resentment to um, her ex and the fact that it was um, his bird, she unfortunately took it out on Murph. And she put Murph in a back room. Um, and an extra bathroom all by himself for probably about two or three years where she just fed and watered him. And um, he went through a lot of trauma with that. He is really afraid of people. He's really afraid of toys. But he has a very, very, very happy and cheery vocabulary. And he right away told us his name was Murph. And he loves meeting new feathered friends in the flock, as you can see. <laughs> and I, guys, I don't know about you, but I think he really loves his new home. <laughs> Leave a comment if you think Murph likes his new home. Hi, so let me show you Stella. Let me close this up here. Bye, Murph. Look at Murph trying to spread his tail, showing off. Oh, I gotta close this somehow. We gotta figure that one out. I don't know why that's hard for me to close. Okay. And here is Stella. I know the sun is a little bit in our way here, um, but Stella is actually a double yellowhead girl who came to us from New York. And she is very special. She's actually a very nice girl. And um, she's very sweet. And we love her. And she is here enjoying the outside weather as well. She's still under quarantine. But um, we do love on her. And we do interact with her. And she is just an amazing girl. And keep watching because we are going to have her in a lot more videos. So say hi, Stella. 
and Stella actually talks a lot. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get the right angle because the sun is actually just beautiful on the camera right now. So it's, it's a little like flashing on the camera. But uh, Stella actually talks a lot and I absolutely love it. So what happens is when you put birds together that talk a lot is they'll actually teach each other how to talk. And let me get a good angle here so I can get a good color. Hi, Mark. He's still trying to show off. They'll actually teach each other how to talk. And th this is not like an old dog learns can't learn new tricks because it does, in my experience, no matter how old the bird, if you have even two older mature birds, if they have an extensive vocabulary, they will actually teach each other how to talk. Um, the older birds will even learn the new words, the new songs, the new sayings and they will teach the babies how to talk. So it's really, really cool. I can't wait to see how much Murph teaches Stella and how much Stella teaches Murph. And look at, she's actually acting really shy. Again, guys, trying to get like a good, a good um, angle here with the sun. Let me open this up really quick. Say hi, Stella. Yeah, I have to come here like in the morning time uh, where there's not such a glare, but she is a beautiful, beautiful girl. Hi, Stella. She's like, what is going on? Who is Murph and why is he saying hi? Maybe she's a little bashful. Hi, baby girl. All right, so we are going to let him acclimate, let him get to know each other. And actually, this is just a tip. Um, this, having a setup like this where the birds can actually interact with each, with each other through the cages, um, this is what most people talk about. Well, I say most people, but uh, a lot of breeders don't like to give out their secrets, but here I, I love to share the information because it's really important. Um, we you know we get asked a lot of breeding questions, which stay tuned for those videos because we're going to be making a lot of videos for that, for the breeding questions and the basic questions that we always get asked. But one of the things that I always tell customers is please introduce your birds. Do not just put them in the same cage, especially when you're trying to breed them. Um, always introduce them side by side so that they could get to know each other and don't be impatient. Sometimes you have to put them side by side for several months so that they could get to know each other. And this is also a very good tip for certain species of cockatoos and for Amazons because Amazons and certain species of cockatoos are actually some of the most aggressive breeders and you don't just want to throw two birds in that don't know each other in the same cage together so there's a lot more that goes with that like you don't want to throw in a young bird with an old bird an old bird with a young bird etc etc but again keep us uh, wa keep watch stay tuned for those videos because we're going to be giving a lot more videos um, to inform the public of this stuff and again like and subscribe don't forget to like and subscribe because the more you like and subscribe that little button down below just press subscribe right there that little button down below just press subscribe and just doing that little one second thing pressing subscribe doesn't affect your life at all but it actually helps us a lot to keep these videos going for you guys so again stay tuned we have a lot more for you guys thank you for watching and never forget to keep it pretty guys you might want to stand on that side, just in case it's just, the nest box is heavy or less it can go. The screw is on the market. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to switch out the nest box, like I said, um, because this nest box is a little old, it's gotten warped, and it's open a little. And birds, as we know, when they make their nests, they look for the most secure places to nest, and obviously this isn't the most secure nest And she actually, Mama, <laughs> she's looking at us, Mama Blue Crown has actually had clutches to babies, so they're proven breeders. But lately she looks like she wants to nest, but she hasn't. And so our theory is, is that Mama doesn't feel secure anymore because of this warped nest box. So you always want to make sure their nest box gives them a sense of security. So we're going to switch that out.
You want to stress them out as less or not stress them out as much as possible. All right, we got our new nest box and we're going to show you the details later on. Um, it's actually a nest box that we are going to patent and I'm so excited about it. And once we do patent it, we can tell you what we did to it to make it special. And no, it's not that nifty metal door. <laughs> Um, but I asked uh, Dennis to put a few more clips in the front um, because the nest box is actually pretty heavy duty because of the mechanics inside of it. Um, so let's go see him putting in the clips in the front. Here is the mama and daddy waiting over here to go in their new home. So again, I did ask them to put the clips in the front um because the nest box is pretty heavy in the back and i don't want like a wind or anything to rip the cage off or the weight to become too heavy <laughs> hi anona and then you just fill it up with betty all right, so the nest box is up. We're gonna keep you updated on Mama and Daddy Blue Crown and let you know how they like it. Um, I'm gonna take a quick second and answer a question that I love answering. Um, there was a customer who thanked us for letting them come and visit the sanctuary that we're building here. And their question was, we noticed you breed, why do you breed? And that is a legit question, right? Why do we breed? Um, we're going to do a show a little bit about the background about me a little bit about the background about Dennis um, So that you can learn where we come from. I know a lot of you already do especially your the viewers who know us in person um, But the main answer to the question without all of the background stuff is um, We actually do not request any money from the viewers. We don't request donations um, we buy our own toys, we buy our own food, we buy the stuff that the uh, sanctuary needs for the parrots, and we don't request anything. Again, thank you for all of the support, guys. The main way you can support us, honestly, just press that subscribe button. It doesn't affect your life. It takes one second. Press the subscribe button, share, and it really helps us a lot. And um, again, never forget, keep it birdie, and stay tuned for more.